Hey, this is Tyler with TJX Survival and Survival Dispatch. Let's talk today about the Mojave Scissor Snare. It's one of my favorites because you can be creative in the way that you install it and how you apply it. It can be put in front of a hole, it can be put vertical, it can be put along a game trail, and that's super versatile. So let's check this thing out. All right, so how do you make a Mojave scissor snare? Well, I got one right here. So if you refer back to my video on how to make natural cordage, you just do that in volume, and that's how you're gonna make your Mojave scissor snare. I'm not gonna review how to do the, the reverse wrap. Um, just know that you need a lot of string, like six foot or more. <clears throat> now, I have used Dogbane sit and made a bunch of string for this guy right here and the Mojave scissor snare is only really four components it's a whole bunch of string and two rigid sticks it's pretty simple so basically what you're going to do is you're going to i have this is tamarisk um, which is kind of a hard stick you want something that's hard so that it doesn't bend so you want it to be dry if you can Okay, all the components are is this. Two straight sticks, I don't know, about the length of your forearm. One cord on the bottom to tie these together. One loop on the top that you can run this string through. And then a really long string with a little paddle on it. Pretty simple. Now, the way that this applies, and you almost have to feel it to really understand how it works, is it works kind of like a vice grip and the animal is going to go in between these two and then trigger it and that triggering action will cause this to close and that will grip the animal very tight and how tight you want it to grip will be dependent upon how small that little loop is right there so you can lengthen it or shrink it i'm going to just leave it how it is for now the cool thing about this is if there was a rabbit hole right here I can put that right above the rabbit hole and the rabbit will come up and it will drag it for a while and then yank this paddle out from underneath the rock and then I'm gonna have some sort of an engine above it. I'm gonna use this stick to represent the engine. An engine is just a tree that's bent over that's pulling up on this. If you've got a game trail going through here that's access to a river, if you've got a hole in the ground where you know like a rabbit den or something's gonna travel through, if you've got some sort of a, an access path, that's where you want to set this up at. That's the cool thing about the Mojave Scissor Snare, is you can put it wherever. You can lay it flat over a hole, you can make it vertical. So if this was a game trail, going right through here, right, I'd clear it out a little bit, maybe put some brush on the left and right side, and I would stick that right in the middle of it. It's gonna hold itself up, which is kind of cool. Then the next thing that I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna have this paddle, sitting underneath some sort of a rock off to the side. And that rock, that paddle is gonna hold the tension. Now you would think that you can have it straight forward. Sometimes you need to put it on the back side. It depends on how strong your engine is that's pulling on your string. And I am going to represent the engine in this case. So I've got kind of a, a steep ledge on the edge of this rock and it's just the one sitting behind me. So I'll put it right down like that. And you want it to be at a 90 degree angle, otherwise it's just gonna slide out. So I'll then take this string, I'll bend a tree over really tight, and then tie the string to it, okay? This is just gonna represent the, uh, the tree for now, because clearly this is not a tight engine. So what happens is the game, right I'll just use my hand the game comes cruising along it sticks its head you know the rabbit or whatever sticks its head through the Mojave scissor snare starts walking forward and feels some sort of pressure when animals feel pressure they run from it as they run that will tighten up and yank that that paddle out when that happens when that paddle gets yanked out then the engine tightens it up 
and it locks it down and it grips the animal. If you have a high enough engine or stick, it'll actually pull the animal up in the air and suspend it and hold it. And this is a very vice grip feeling um, stick. I, I wish I could convey feel, but it's crushing. Like it's actually very painful if you really start pulling on these tight. It'll cut circulation off in your hand. If it's gonna cut circulation off in your hand, it's gonna hold the animal up. The other valuable thing about this is if you've ever trapped squirrels or little biting animals, especially stuff like uh, raccoons, they'll chew right through your string, but they're not gonna chew through these sticks, at least not before they pass out. So it's a really effective way to catch animals and post it however you want. Let me show you how that works one more time. We've got a game trail. Got the stick sitting underneath some sort of a a rock like that, some sort of a string pulling up on it. The animal comes and cruises along and knocks it out and then starts to pull. As they pull, it tightens, pops that little paddle up, and then the, the um, tree yanks up and holds them and you've got them trapped. If you set a few of these around your campsite, when they go off, you hear this and the animal kind of freaking out. Go over there, got yourself some dinner. All right, hopefully this is valuable to you. It's one of the coolest traps I've ever seen that's 100% primitive, really easy to make, two sticks and a bunch of string. Um, go set it up, try to set it up on game trails going in and out of the river. Try to make like five or six of them. You're not gonna just rely on one. And probably the most important thing is where you put this trap because if you can, as you're hiking, find that game trail that clearly the animals use every single day, put one on there, maybe hike a quarter of a mile, put another one on the next trap, and then as you are doing your things throughout the day, come back and check these traps out, you'll have a much higher probability of it feeding you every day than if you just stick a bunch of them right close in areas where animals are clearly not traveling. All right, guys, hopefully this is valuable to you. Leave comments down below, and thank you for watching.